evaluate the following expressions. So on the left, first of all, we have find x squared plus 3x minus 5 if x is equal to 2. So that would be the number 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 5. I always like to put those parentheses to represent where the x used to be. It'll make it very easy to keep track of, uh, for example, negatives and things like that. So what is uh, order of operations going to tell us now? 2 squared would be 4, 3 times 2 would be 6, minus 5, 4 plus 6 is of course 10, minus 5, and so the final answer to the left problem would be the number 5. Let's try it again. Let's try the problem on the right. Find y squared minus 3y plus 7 if y is equal to negative 3. So again, I'm going to put out some beginning parentheses here so I can start to set up my problem. So I'm replacing y with the parentheses, and then inside of those parentheses, I'm going to put the number that we're replacing, which is the number negative 3. So now, first of all, negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Then we have minus 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9 plus 7. Now, 9 minus negative 9 would be 18 plus 7, and that gives us a final answer of 25. So, why don't you try one on your own? Pause the video and see if you can find the value of this expression. So, assuming you uh, paused it here, gave it a shot, let's try to do it together. Looks like we have negative 2 times something squared plus something minus 3 and the something that we're replacing is n equals negative 2. So put negative 2 there and negative 2 there to replace for the n. Now, looks like we have negative 2 times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, so that's a 4, plus a negative 2 minus a 3. Order of operations says we're going to have to do the negative 2 times 4 first, so that would be negative 8 plus negative 2 minus 3. Now negative 8 plus a negative 2 would be negative 10 minus 3, so the final answer we're expecting looks like a negative 13.